In this video, I'm going to quickly go over all the things that attributed to Don Staley's rare show of emotions after she won her third championship. The first five minutes of this video, I want to talk about the Freshies because they are very important to this story. The Freshies consist of Aaliyah Boston, Letitia Mihir, Zaya Cook, Olivia Thompson, and Brie Bill. This was Don Staley's first ever number one freshman class. This class addressed every position in the lineup. Zaya Cook could run the point and could get some shots up. Olivia Thompson was a shooter. Bree Bill was a wing player, could play the small forward. Then you had L.A. and Aaliyah Boston, who could do the inside work. South Carolina was ranked number one during the 2019-2020 season. And then leading up into March Madness, they were the favorite to win it all. But COVID-19 happened. Here's how the freshie sophomore season ended. Brink is trapped, loses it. Boston has it. Squeezes it to Beal. Two seconds left. Beal misses Boston. No! Aaliyah Boston's follow just misses at the buzzer. Stanford escapes. Stanford is headed to the national championship game. An absolutely scintillating finish as South Carolina walks off thanking their fans. Zaya Cook clearly upset after her heroic performance tonight. What a blow. Now here's how the Freshies junior season ended. South Carolina, Dawn Staley on the brink of championship number two. It is not unfinished business any longer. South Carolina has captured its second national championship. Tears of triumph in 2022. From the moment that put back miss, Aaliyah Boston was on a mission. Mission complete. And Holly is standing by with Aaliyah. Nobody can understand the journey that it has taken you to be crowned a champion here tonight. How do you describe the sacrifice and the work that has brought you to this very moment? Holly, it feels amazing. And honestly, I've been thinking about it since last season because everyone had a picture of me crying at the end of the Final Four. And they put it everywhere as if that was some type of... But today we're national champions. And happy tears, Holly. Happy tears. Beautiful. Now the Freshies are in their senior year. They are 36 and 0. They are in the final four. And if they win this, they go to the championship. Johnson to inbound. Iowa leads by four. Boston will fire a three. No. Banged around. Out of bounds. Iowa ball with 2.9 to go. This dominant run from this historic class of South Carolina on the brink of ending here tonight. Martin gets it into Clark. Clark races away, and the mythical mastery of Caitlin Clark continues. Iowa has conquered South Carolina. Aaliyah Boston consoling Zaya Cook. After the game, you know, I told Raven, I said, this is your team. You know, you've been in the system for two years now. Next year coming up, like, people are going to look to you for that leadership role. You know, out of Houston, um, a lot of times other coaches, your colleagues, have sitting in that spot and talked about you all being bullies. What's the truth about your team? The truth about our team, we're not bar fighters. We're not thugs, we're not monkeys, we're not street fighters. Um, this team exemplifies how you need to approach basketball on the court and off the court. I do think that that's sometimes brought into the game and it, and it, and it hurts. Watch what you say when you're in public and you're talking about my team in particular. Just watch what you say about our team.
because it's wrong. Don't judge us by the color of our skin, okay? Judge us by how we approach the game. And you may not like how we play the game, may not like it. That's the way we play. That's the way, we, that's the way I coach. I'm not changing. We found success in it. And maybe some days, like today, we end up on the losing side of the, the stick. But guess what? We live to see another day. We live to see um, the comeback next year and try to do this again. Because I'm not changing. I'm not changing. If Aaliyah does ask you for your opinion about what she should do next year, what will you tell her? And I'm not tell her to go. I mean, there are, you know, there are defenses that are played against her that won't allow her to play her game. Um, and then it's hard to officiate that. It's hard to officiate that. So I would tell her to go. She's, she's, she's great. I mean, she's ready. She's ready. She's ready to um, see single coverage. She's ready to um, make, the, make the next step to the, you know, to the league. This was a big play in the game that day. This is four minutes left in the first quarter, and Aaliyah Boston is about to get her second foul. The best player on the floor. Now she has to go sit. Let's rewatch. This is an example of what Don is talking about. Look at Aaliyah. She just got pushed. Look down. She's getting about to get pushed again right there. Now watch what she do when she has the ball. How is that an offensive foul on Aaliyah? So, yeah, the freshies left. South Carolina lost seven seniors last year. The five freshies and the two grad seniors. The four years the freshies were there, they won 129 games and only lost nine. They had three Final Four appearances, one Final Four win, and one championship. Then four out of the five freshies went to the WNBA. South Carolina started this year with six returning players, two transfer players, and three freshmen and zero household names for the first time in a while. They started summer workouts in June. That is two months after the last season ended. Their performance coach, Molly Bonetti, used the summer workouts to focus on conditioning, team building, and communication. And Fridays were Final Four Fridays. Final Four Fridays are specifically designed to prepare them for the Final Four. They did a little bit of everything. Tug of war, military crawl, tire flip, wheelbarrow relay, don't let the rope touch the ground challenge, sprints, runs, all kind of cool stuff. All of this preparation will lead up to the successful year that no one thought they would have. They made history and they did it their way. A lot of this video will be told from Dawn's own mouth. Listen to how she talks about her new team and how some sentiments change or stay the same after each win. Dawn's, a, I mean, how different is it not looking out there and seeing Leah and Bree? You know, four year starters are out there, and how is this group, you know, kind of gelling together? Uh, I mean, it's obviously they were mainstays for the last four years, and to not have them is definitely a big boy. Um, but this crew is stepping up. I mean, they've, they're, they're, they're starting to figure some things out. Um, somewhere it was a different story, like. <laughs> um, but but they're, they're gelling a lot more. Raven, um, obviously the Final Four had so much viewership, and then uh, there were so many talking points from that Final Four. I know it was a disappointing end, but how are you guys using that as motivation going into the season? Is there a chip on your shoulder this season? Oh, yes. I was just saying um, it brought fuel to the fire. And, I, you know, we had tears of pain, not tears of joy. We wanted the tears of joy, but we, we had tears of pain. I feel like this year, you know, we're going to you know, go off that game and put fuel to the fire. Like, definitely the ones that were here, me, Camilla, Breezy, Tanaya. We definitely, you know, go back to that game and, like, dang, like, we had high expectations for ourselves was to win that national championship. And not, not winning that, you know, just bring fuel to the fire for this year. So, 
For you personally, that image of Caitlin, you know, waving you off went viral. How did you use that as motivation this summer? And how did you deal with that with so much attention? Well, honestly, I don't think a lot of people in my, a lot of people could handle that. You know, it went, it did go viral, but I'm glad that I have people around me such as Coach Daly, my teammates, and just resources that, you know, Coach Daly brings around us that help me. So I think that, you know, it happens for a reason. I always go to God and I say things happen for a reason. Maybe I needed that to happen to me. So I definitely will take that as fuel to the fire. And, you know, it just tell me I need to get in the gym, put up some shots, go get my shot. So. Well, how long um, did it take you to get over that loss, or have you gotten over, have you gotten over it? And is it still just, um, I don't know, like an open wound? Well, yes, I definitely got over the loss. You can't dwell on bad things, but you could definitely, you know, use it as motivation. So I definitely, we, we definitely got over of that loss. But I just say, you know, that loss is going to help us for this year. I mean, it's not a rebuild. It's not a rebuild um, for us because we, we're very talented. Like, we got talent on our team. We just lack a little bit of game day experience um i mean half of our roster you know have have played in some high level basketball we just have to up their experience and we got to create that and assimilate that in practices um so when the games come is it's more natural for them um we could not put them in a we could not put them in a better situation um, because of the players that we had in place um so we would have liked to experience some of them having a little bit more experience being in the starting lineup but we were just that you know they couldn't break into it basically what she's saying is the six returning players on the team didn't get much in-game experience because the seven seniors who was on the team last year played most of the time um, but I'm excited like I'm excited for this team we're in a position where we're not the hunted we're hunting and that's not a bad place to be uh, question marks going into the season? Um, just, uh, just to get off to a good start and to play with some cohesion um, because it's going to be a totally new starting five that's starting, like, <laughs> from scratch. So what? I'm excited, though. I'm excited to see how they come out and play and what they do when they're when they're put under the pressure of playing in front of Hopefully over 10,000 people. Off to kids. Johnson will fire. And taken on the run by Phil Wiley. Wiley dumps it inside. Cardoso the catch. Corner catch. Fire off the mark for Prosper. And Pal Pal the rebound. Shakes around. Dishes. What a drop when we go back home, too. Adalgo has it knocked away. Great hands. By Phil Wiley, the no look pass to Johnson who lays it. Greens, don't see it there. Adalgo throws it away. Johnson in transition, banks it in. Right. Shovels to Prosper. Prosper gets denied. For Wiley and Cardoso both there. Here's for Wiley weaving and laying through the contact from Phil Wiley. 15 for Adalgo. Wow, for Wiley. Pow Pow. Off to Full Wiley back into the game. Oh my goodness. To Pow Pow. I mean, to come up here with you know, a, a very young, all new roster and hang 100 points on the number 10 team in the country, just what does that do for your confidence at having this be the opener? Um, I'm, I'm happy for our team. Like, our team, you know, from, from the summer, like in June, July, when we first got together. So now, I, I really couldn't foresee it, and maybe I'm too close to the situation to see it, but they've really worked extremely hard for each other, um, and this is what happens. Like, the, the ball sharing was, was incredible. Tessa Johnson, rainbow arcing three. Going back to Gamecock's way. Wiley coming in off the bench. Three kicks. Off balance shot and Corey Kitts gets it to fall. She's going to the free throw line too. 
know, Kids came in last year in December, an early enrollee. She has taken advantage of being able to get into the weight room, to adjusting to the physicality of the game. And Don Staley said, look, she's earned that starting spot at the four spot. Big seconds. South Carolina, they want to press, but you don't want to foul. How disciplined can you be? John was put into the game to bring a defensive presence, able to get the turnover and then paid it off. That pointer by Raven Johnson in the corner. Everybody scouts to stop South Carolina's points in the paint. So when the ball goes inside to Ashlyn Watkins, Raven Johnson is wide open in the corner. She is a three-point threat. You've got to guard her. You can't give her that much time. That's automatic. So Dawn, obviously, another, you know, major win against a top 15 opponent. Um, you know, people are already saying, Brenda Freeze said this team could be better than last year's. Uh, polls are starting to talk maybe they'll be number one tomorrow. Don, I'm sure this coaching staff had a, you know, idea of how good this team could be. <laughs> but, no, we didn't. Okay, no, you didn't. <laughs> so when they go perform like this out of the gates, so I'm guessing you're saying it was a shock to you, and also what does it do for their confidence to say, oh, okay, we got something cooking here? You know, it, it's hard because when you're so close to the situation, you you know what our deficiencies are. Like, we know as coaches, um, but this team has really um, – they're, they're playing together. They're, they have buy-in with each other. They have buy-in with, with our coaching staff. Um, and I, I really didn't see it. Like, I, I didn't see this. By the time the first week of college hoops was over, South Carolina was number one. You talked preseason about being the hunters, not the hunted this year. Now that you're back at number one, does it feel like kind of you're being chased down again now? It, it, it really doesn't, you know, because we're I, – I, I get to work with them every day. I do, and I see all the deficiencies that we have. Um, it's just this team has a way, I guess. And the two games that we played, the, the show up on game day and, and find a way to, to put some points on the scoreboard, and hopefully that trend continues for us. They ran through the non-con, aside from a scare in North Carolina, and then, do, then they started running through the conference teams. Then it was time to play LSU. They had to go in that hostile environment to a team that had won 29 straight at home. As Fola Wiley goes dashing in with the layup. Quick and athletic, and she just does a great job poking the ball away from Angel Reese, and we've seen how good she can be in trance. She was looking to uh, pass, but then she saw that the shot clock was ticking down. Cole Wiley glides in, dishes out, gets it back, will take, and hit from three. To finishing and also stepping in to the three ball with confidence. She's been a difference led. Van Litz floater won't go. Rebound Johnson, and still time for South Carolina now. Van Leith went too early. Here's Paul Wiley connecting on a three. A little extra to give your team energy. Reese gets swallowed up by Cardoso. Gives a little stare afterwards. We saw in the first half, both on the offensive and defensive ends. Crowd saw the replay one. And here comes South Carolina. A chance to take the lead. Cardoso lays it in. South Carolina, its first lead since it was 2 0 and Aaliyah Boston delighting in it. Here's Pow Pow. Hall will take that one and hit. Here's Pow Pow dumping it down in the corner. Hall, she got it. Another three for Bree Hall. Johnson with five to shoot. Johnson on the attack. Johnson lays it in. Raven Johnson to the rescue. Speaking of the growth of women's basketball, Ali is a big part of that. What has it meant to have her to help out at the game last night and here at practice today? Aaliyah was in full sweat, like, like full. She probably needed the shower after the game because she was she was really really into it. Um, she still is very close friends with a couple of players on our team, and 
Yeah. You know, she she knows what success feels like. She she's met big moments, right? So, you know, some of our players have never been in those kind of moments where they're actually playing. They've been in them sitting on the bench cheering, um, but they haven't been in those moments to have to make the play. And it was so good to hear from somebody that that's been in it time and time again, and they're able to part their knowledge in game to some of those players and they produce I mean it's you know as a as a coach it's super proud moments like super proud moments that our former players can come back and pour into our, our current players. South Carolina went on to finish the regular season 29 and 0 and became regular season champs then it was time for the SEC tournament. Don, you mentioned several times throughout the year that this team's young and they don't play like they practice back-to-back -back perfect seasons. Has that sunk in? Just, just what's your opinion from the head chair about how they did this? Um, I don't, I, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know. But um, they, they find they're, they're a super competitive group that um, they don't really like losing. But I am super proud of them. Like super proud. I think every. You know, every you know, if you compare the undefeated season from last year to this year, it's so much different. Um, yet we end up in the same place, and doesn't make me any any more or less proud. Is I'm just super proud of this uh, of this this young group. That's kind of what I wanted to ask you about, Coach. You know, different circumstances completely this year from last year, but still the same end result. How are, you've talked about it a little bit, but how are the vibes different in the locker room and in the coaches room in particular, I guess this year, heading into the postseason, kind of in the same spot? So I will probably equate it to a doctorate program. And they're gonna get me for saying this, and daycare. <laughs> like, our locker room sounds like daycare. Like it's so much talking, like, is so much talking about nothing that, you know, you, you, and we, in the beginning of the season, we would just say, you know, be quiet, like, and now it's just, it's just who they are. It really is just who they are. And it's the, you know, it's, it's their identity. And we, we really don't fight that battle. You know, we just put our earplugs in and keep it moving. <laughs> You talked about um, how this team, you know, you had to quit fighting at certain points because they're going to be who they are. Have you seen enough from them now to say, okay, it's postseason, and they're able, they're going to be able to do what they've done during the regular season, or do they have still have a couple of things to prove to you? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't feel, like, I don't feel like we're locked to win every basketball game. I mean, because it's, I mean, we're, every game that I, that we enter into with this team, you know, it's the same question mark that hangs over, like, who, who are they going to be? And yes, you, you win, I don't know, what is it, 28 games? 29 games? When you win 29 games, you think that's, those are the habits you create, but they're still a very young group. And, and postseason is a lot different than it is regular season. So I'm anxious to see how they, they operate in the SEC tournament space. In the SEC tournament, as the number one team, they had a double bye. After two days off, they had to play Texas A&M, which they won, and now they had to play Tennessee. If they win this, they go to the championship. And they are down two points with 11 seconds left. Has dominated this tournament eight of the last 11 seasons, seven of the last nine tournaments. They have won SEC titles. Pow, pow. The kick out to Raven Johnson short. Tennessee can feel it. The foul was on Malaysia for Wiley. And Tennessee is in the bonus. They've had their chances two times before against South Carolina. Can they finish it off here? 
Gamecocks have no timeouts. Three point seven for Wiley. She's fouled by Spear, no shot. For Wiley tried to get in the act of shooting, but that foul was on the floor. That was a smart play by Jewel Spear. So South Carolina will have to inbound again. They don't have a timeout. Dawn Staley is trying to quickly talk to her team with 1.1. And Tennessee still has one foul to give, but they don't need to foul. Cardoso for three. Camila Cardoso, the SEC Defensive Player of the Year, winning it in the semifinals with her offense, her first three-pointer. The last person that you would expect to be in the position to pull the three to pull off the win for South Carolina. It's Camilla Cardoso at the top of the key. Tennessee said there's no need to go out there and guard the big girl 6'7". Camilla Cardoso banks it in. She has never hit a three-pointer in her career until this. Wow. And devastation for Tennessee, who was so close to taking down the number one team. Six seven can shoot the three two. Camilla Cardoso is with Brooke. Thank you, Courtney. I don't even know if you can hear me. I'm going to try to scream loud. That was the first three this season you hit. Happened to be a game winner as well. Take us through that play. Who was that drawn out for? Well, um, coach wanted me to get the ball in the top of the key and hit it to foul. And then she taught me to shoot it. And I was like, OK. I, I practiced them in practice. So I just stepped back and shot it. You shot it pretty well, too. It goes in. Tell us what you're feeling right now. Um, I'm very happy. I feel like my teammates needed me. I had the best game that I could have. I think I was off all night, so I'm just happy that I made the shot and I I'm able to take them to the finals. I mean, you missed time this season as well. You guys also started this game on fire, but you faced a very feisty Tennessee team. What did that feel like as they were starting to make their comeback? Um, we knew Tennessee was going to fight for 40 minutes. We played them for the third time now. It's not easy to beat somebody for three times in a row. So we knew they were going to come here and put them on fight, so we just try to stay on poise. It's the kill that game plan and do what we do. When your teammates surrounded you, just gave you all that love, how much energy does that help give this team going into the finals tomorrow? A lot, man. I feel like we have a lot of love for each other. We support each other. We want to see each other succeed no matter what. So it just means a lot. Well, congratulations. Incredible shot for you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Her first career three-pointer. And Gamecock Nation with a sigh of relief. I'm speechless and to think about Camilla Cardoso hit that three the game winner and have her mother and her sister here Wow They are here visiting from Brazil Camilla Cardoso Leaving her home country at the age of 15 to play basketball Maybe for moments like this where she helps her team stay undefeated and move on to the SEC Tournament Championship game. Don, what was that experience like? Because with this team, we've talked all along about 
you know, how they don't know what they don't know. And they still pulled this, able to pull this out when it looked like all the odds were against them. It's just uncommon favor. Like, it's uncommon favor. And I, I, I do have to mention this. Every, every game, Mrs. Boston um, sends out scripture, sends out messages. And um, I'm looking at my phone, and she just texts about 644. And she said, I told you. She is the one person that has prayed over our program while Leah was here, and probably more, that she's not here. To have the, the same type or more success that we had when her daughter was here. Now, that is, that is hard to believe. It's really hard to believe when she says things like that. But the more and more she says it, the more and more great things are happening to our program. Um, so I'm just happy that we have a prayer warrior like Mrs. Boston every day, because I told her this today. I said, when you, send, you, when you send me these messages, it gives me a perfect peace amongst everything that we're doing and having to deal with, and I just really appreciate that. Um, none happier than I am for our players. They work hard, I just, you know, Really, it flashed in front of me. Like, what, what are the headlines are going to say? What are, you know, some of y'all have written some of y'all stories already. I got to change it up a little bit. But I'm just happy for our players because I don't want them to endure that, like, right now. It could happen in the future. I hope not. But I'm, I'm happy that we live to see another day. We put Malaysia in the game because she has some late game heroics or some late shot clock heroics um, and some end of quarter heroics for us. So we wanted to put her in the game to see if she can get a, sh a good look at a shot. She got fouled and then it set up the play where, you know, I really wanted Powell to be in a position to catch and shoot, you know, but I knew they weren't gonna, they did a great job on Powell all night long. So I was skeptical about giving her the ball. And then I just told Raven to just throw it high to Camilla. Camilla passed it to Powell and I'm like, no, they're. They're not going to let Powell get any, you know, any daylight at, at the end before I told Camilla, yelled at her and said, shoot it. I added some more words to that, but I, I can't say it right here. Watch the physicality of Angel Reese and Camilla Cardoso. And Angel Reese is already having some verbiage, a little communication between the big girls down low. It might be a little spicy in the paint today, Peck. Oh, yeah. You watch the battle that is going on inside. These two are going to go at it all day long. I think Angel said, I'm bringing it. Camilla said, I love it. Talk about get the ball inside. Just make sure you got a balance. They are third in the nation in three-point percentage. That's the second on Angel Reese. And Don Staley wants that to be reviewed. Angel Reese and Car Camilla Cardoso going at it inside. Hey, we'll take a look at this. Oh, I think Angel Reese may be called for the swinging of the elbow. They may upgrade that one. Man, Camilla was hit, pushed, taunted, elbowed, had her hair pulled. You name it, all game. She dealt with it and was cool with it. And if you're one of those people that say that that's part of the game, I'll agree with you. But I'm also going to agree with Camilla if she's one of them people that will let you do whatever you want to her, just as long as you don't touch one of her people. Free Hall gives herself some space. She was so important at the end of the first meeting with LSU. 6-0 run Gamecocks for Wiley. And that could be an intentional foul. Oh, we don't want this. Camilla Cardoso being looked at with blood on her lip. Let's see what just happened again. Wazzy Johnson holds on to Malaysia for Wiley. And then Flage 
pushes Watkins. That's when Cardoso comes up and pushes Flage down. LSU does not have any timeouts. But they've got a foul. And they don't. Eight is pretty great, and South Carolina has been fantastic at the SEC tournament. An eighth SEC tournament title in the last 10 seasons. And it was a balanced attack. Starting the game in the first half, South Carolina used all 10. One point one seconds of the clock today. Daily, congratulations! Your eighth SEC championship in ten years. How did you get it done today? I mean, the, the players. It's all about the players being able to make plays on both sides of the basketball. You know, I just want to apologize to the basketball community. You know, when you're playing in championship games like this in our league, things get heated. No bad intentions. They just try. The, the, their emotions got so far ahead of them that sometimes these things happen. So I want to apologize for for us playing a part in that because that's not who we are and that's not what we're about. Um, but I'm happy for the players that were able to finish the game and get us another championship. You got this team was on the biggest stage. You guys <laughs> faced adversity in each game in different ways. Describe how closer this experience has brought this group uh, heading into a run where you guys will have to go 6-0 and to cut down the nets. Yeah, no, this is a first experience for everyone. Um, as I said before, the emotions hasn't sunk in yet, and I don't know when that's going to sink in, but um, it definitely brought us closer together. Um, you know, their family, I love them so much. We just love each other very, very much. We're just so genuine with each other. We trust each other. We support each other in every aspect. And it's just, it's gonna help us in the long run because we we felt what it felt like yesterday. We were that close game. Like we didn't want to feel like that ever again. But this feeling, I think everyone, everyone wants to feel this feeling again. So we just gotta get back in the lab and uh, get back to work and just keep doing what we're doing. Front row. Don, you've got some time now before your next game. What's gonna be the plan, the process to get this team ready for the NCAA tournament, especially your players who are going through this for the first time? Yep. I mean, rest, rest, a lot of rest. Like, we'll, we'll probably take uh, the next three or four days off from practice. They'll, they'll have their days off from practice, but not from class. Um, and some of the stuff that uh, they'll have to do with um, our athletic trainer and our performance coach. No practice, though. Don, you've got to have some conflicting emotions about the way this unfolded in the sense that, like a parent, you may not be happy with one of your children did, but if they're standing up for their sibling, you know, you part of you was really proud of that too. I mean, you talk about how close this team is. Yeah. You know, they showed they stood up for one another no matter what the situation was. That's gotta be a you know, it's gotta be something to balance there. Yeah, there there is. And and you know, a lot of people ask me to compare last year's team to this year's team. That that would have never happened in last year's team. You know, because they would have they would have been so political about it. If if that would have happened, then Aaliyah would have probably just been the referee and just kind of no, don't do that. Like, um, and then you got this team that that they're protectors. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a it's a bittersweet. Like, you you want them to protect their their sisters at the same time. You want them to do it in a way in which you don't get penalized. Um, and you, you're not in a position to not be able to celebrate, um, which is something super hard to do, like super hard to do, um, to win an SEC tournament championship. So um, we'll talk about it, but I know they will draw strength from it. The difference between this year's team and last year's team, and she said that the fight that happened in the SEC championship game would have never happened because you would have been the referee. Oh, for sure. Leader. Oh, for sure. I'm like, we don't have to do that. I'm like, let's just hoop and be happy. Like, So, I mean, you're almost kind of answering my next question, but it was going to be, what do you think went wrong in that game from the opening tip to the finish? Like, what was the turning point?
listen, if you really, if everybody really watched the game, you know that there was smack talk from like the opening tip. And I think that if there's going to be smack talk, like that's totally cool because we're competitors and like we don't limit smack talk to certain players, certain teams. But if we're going to do that, then we also need to make sure there's like we have to control it. And the controlling part definitely comes from the refs. But just understand that like you have two competitive teams here, like nobody's going to want to back down, but you can't let stuff go on like I feel like they're like there are a lot of videos right now even like servicing of like things that happened in the game and I just think like you have to be able to put a stop to it early mm -hmm. because now it's kind of like there's a buildup you know like whether that's pulling a jersey or pushing someone off like I just think there's a buildup we have five new starters a rebuilding year according to some nobody could have predicted you would have been undefeated in the elite eight but here we are including when me <laughs> When did you know that this team was special? Is there a particular game or moment that you remember? Um I don't I don't know. I don't I don't allow this team to take me to categories because I just stay in real time with them. Um because if you categorize them it's hard. Their competitiveness in practice is what really um, allowed me to go to a place where I knew that they don't like to lose. Uh, you talked yesterday about seeing in Raven's eyes that she wasn't going to let y'all lose that game. And there have been other players, too, who had clutch moments like Bree and Camilla in close games. Does this team seem to have kind of a clutch gene, or do you think that sells the preparation short? Um, I, I think it's, um, it's the competitive piece. Um, like they they don't want to lose and they have an uncanny way of figuring it out um, player by player like you and they don't they're not phased by losing a 22 point lead um, or going down double digits they're not phased by it um, is is unbelievable to, to see how they handle adverse situations all season long so it's more about the character of this team then then you know just pointing out a, a player having a good game and um, meeting the moment so it's it's been a little bit of everybody so it's the fabric of what they've created during the SEC tournament <clears throat> there were a lot of uh, questions uh, celebrating you guys and you talked about you know gee 50 50 games then I was going to go our way and yesterday we were asking a lot of questions talking about big moments your players came through and you said you know oh, we blew a 20 point lead and I, I use that as preface to say is that a message for your team is that a message that you're uh, trying to communicate or is there just like legitimate things you are worried about uh, even during the team you know during the season where you've been undefeated and better than you were last year yeah I'm worried every day every day Every single day. I mean, they're they're still very young, and they've they've had young moments, they've had mature moments, um, they've had you know questionable moments. Um, but but we sit here where we are, um, and I I don't lose sight of not giving them the credit that they deserve being in this place. There we're a really good basketball team that that can have some moments. Um, so it, it's more for them, it's more for everybody to to understand that that we're young. And I, I don't – Indiana's a seasoned basketball team. Like, like I was afraid of the experience that we're, they were bringing into the game. Um, we were fortunate enough to just, you know, get out to a big lead and, and a cushion, so to speak. But, again, our, our team sometimes – when we have a, a cushion like that, we could take it to another level. We can open it up to 30 and 40, um, or we can lose it and, and take it down to 10 or, or lose the lead. And um, but they're again, they're never phased by it. Even our coaches were like, you, "Are you drinking the Kool-Aid?" And a lot of times we're saying we're sipping, but we're not going to take a full gulp. <laughs> As to how good this team is. Back to the Final Four, second year in a row, undefeated, going to the Final Four. Coach, congrats on making it back to the Final Four. It's four straight years I think you've made it that far. Last year you guys were undefeated also at this point. 
what does it mean to get this group to the Final Four? And what, if anything, did you learn last year that you might be able to apply to this year to yeah. get further? Um, just proud. Just proud because because uh, we beat the odds. I mean, the odds said that we weren't um, – we, we shouldn't be – we shouldn't make it back to the Final Four. Um, just proud of our team and, and, and for them believing in themselves. They created a, a certain level of chemistry and – and culture, um, and they stuck with it. And then they, they allowed us to coach them, um, and they trusted us to coach them, even when it didn't feel good to them personally at different, at different times of the season. I am uh, proud of our team, and, and I don't want to ever not give God the glory uh, for, for giving us uncommon favor. I'm sure every group you coach has an impact on who you are as a person and a coach, but you've talked a lot about the unique personality of this group. Mm. I'm curious how they've changed you as a coach. <laughs> um, I mean, this is probably the first time in my career that a team has more stamina in certain areas, like much more stamina than I could, that I could discipline them for. <laughs> um, so I've, I've learned to not fight certain battles, not core value battles, not, not the core principle of who we are and what I stand for, but just the, just the, that their identity, they're loose, they play free. It's allowed them to kind of police themselves and to hold each other, hold each other accountable. And so in, in one regard, I relinquish that in the other regard, they're taking care of it. Like, but it's just different, different than I'm used to. So it, so I give in to allowing them to be um, their silly selves. Like they're really silly. They talk a lot about nothing, but some of that talk is holding each other accountable. They, they talk to each other like in some of the most unadulterated ways <laughs> that we got to close the door and just kind of give them their space. But they enjoy each other. That's who they are. Last year rocked me. It rocked me. It rocked me because um, we had a team full of players who did all the right things, all the right things, gave us no issues for four years. Um, they were COVID babies. They missed the NCAA tournament. Their freshman year, they came back, went to the Final Four. Their sophomore years, we lost at a, you know, um, put back, missed put back um, that was devastating um, to Aaliyah Boston. And then they come back and win a national championship in 2022. And then they carried the heavy load of trying to go back to back. Um, and then it, it didn't end that way. But they gave every single thing. If you could have been around that particular group of young ladies, you want them to win. And we don't know why. And we often try to ask God why, you know, why? And, you know, today I stand here as our why. Doesn't make them feel any better about them not um, cementing their legacy even more. Um, but I know they're, they're, they're happy proud of this group and they're happy proud of South Carolina uh, where they chose to come to school and create a legacy. You said in Albany that having a group like the Freshies sort of having last year and the way it did, it rocked you. Uh, what did that actually look like for you? And did that make the process of like adjusting to this group and their personality harder? Or With the Freshies and, and transition yeah. into this team? Um, I mean, obviously the Freshies hold a, hold a special place in my heart. Um, they all chose to come to South Carolina um, knowing that Somebody, some of them will have to sacrifice. Even them had to sacrifice. Um, they just did things the right way. We had, for four years, nothing, like seriously, no issues, no issues. If there were issues, they handled them. They came to practice every single day. They never looked at a practice card, never. Um, and they were just upstanding. <laughs> I couldn't like, and then I got used to it. You get used to, you know, your life being a little bit easier as a coach on and off the court. And then when, once they all graduate, 
you you know you have this different set and I'm I really am drawn to challenges I wasn't ready <laughs> I wasn't ready for latenesses I wasn't ready for you know no communication I wasn't ready for you know all the things that come with um, having a younger team I wasn't used to not having a leader just really take hold of situations and and handle them so um, the transition was hard, but then once, once I started to look at it as a challenge, it's a little, it's a little, it was better. I wasn't going to let them get the best of, of me, our staff, or our program, or what we built. I mean, they've, they've taught me how to fall back some. They taught me how to, um, there's a number of ways to be successful. Um, they taught me that I have to pivot and do things a little bit differently than we, we normally do things. It's a new normal, but the standard is still the standard, which, um, which I really, really appreciate. Like, and now that we are where we are, um, it's, you know, it's really, truly pleasant. They're, they're pleasant to be around because they're, they're, they're better listeners when they're locked in. Um, and, and their families are, are really good. Like, what was that like for you guys, for you, after when the season ended, and did that serve as motivation? Well, last year, it put fuel to the fire for me, so I'm no, I know it put fuel for, to the fire to my teammates because um, that loss was a tough loss, and not even that, like, this viral video went viral of me getting waved off. People really don't know how, like, how I felt behind the scenes of that video. Like, I was crying. I, I went to coach, and I was like, like why, why does that have to happen to me? Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like things like that, like again, it made me mentally tough, physically tough, because I said I asked God, like, you know, was that meant for me? Like, did did it have to happen to me? I definitely put food to the fire, and that's this is why this season is called revenge season for me. So I'm going to show everybody why, you know, I am one of the top point guards in the country. It all comes down to this: Will it be undefeated South Carolina or Iowa? for the very first time as we welcome. Ryan, you could not have scripted a better ending to this magical women's college season. You have an undefeated South Carolina team looking for redemption and an Iowa team led by a star and unlike any we have ever seen. And Pow Pow decided to transfer. She was looking for a place where she would be surrounded by other players who wanted to be as great as she did. She found a forever home with the Gamecocks. She said from day one, it has felt like family. And Don Staley has built a roster of loaded superstars who are also very unselfish. Look at what's happened during the NCAA tournament. In five games running up to tonight, four different leading scores in those games. Players say we have one goal. We don't care who does it or how we get there. This unselfish attitude has them chasing perfection tonight. The we over me is working for the Gamecocks. See if they have some fun tonight doing just that. A 10 nothing right hook from Iowa to begin the national championship game. Cardoso finally gets South Carolina on the board. Well, Iowa trying to do it again. South Carolina trying to get some revenge. Coming up, Dove Halftime Report. What a high energy first half. Aaliyah Boston joins our outstanding set. Was part of the Hi, Aaliyah. Part of that South Carolina team a season ago. The rookie of the year in the WNBA this past season and future teammate of Caitlin Clark. See Raven Johnson picking Caitlin Clark up full court. And she has done the best job thus far on Clark. Here's Clark. Clark into the pick. Here's Clark. Had it knocked away, taken by Johnson. Johnson on the steal. Shovels to Kitts who lays it in. Clark looking to take Johnson. Clark into the paint, waits, gets denied, goes back up, and a held ball. Iowa has the possession arrow. It's the glue of this team. Full Wiley hopping through, setting up Fagan, unable to finish, but another offensive rebound. Kitts squeezes it out to Full Wiley. Pow Pow's three again. Tahina Pow Pow has been massive from three's first half. She is three for three from downtown. 
Shot clock turns off, and Johnson picks the pocket of court. Raven Johnson lays it in. What a momentum buster to end the half. Clark, does she get it off? No, and that's how the first half ends. Clark's teammates credit her with against UConn was her body language not getting frustrated. How about Tessa Johnson? The freshman again delivering off the bench. The lead right back to seven for South Carolina. Clark. On the drive, has it knocked away by Johnson? He can't drop it in, and the rebound for Wiley. For Wiley, flips it ahead. Johnson, another Tessa Johnson, a freshman in status only. Timeout, Iowa. Mark finishes with 30 points. Six seconds to go. Perfection with a touch of sweet redemption. Undefeated South Carolina has won its third national championship. The emotions are for all the mess she's had to endure as a black coach with a black team. Constantly being overlooked, lack of coverage, the name calling, the trash officials. When the Freshies left, they thought it was over for Don. But then her team beat everybody they played. 11 top 25 teams, no team scored over 76 points on them. They played one of the toughest non-conference schedules. No one thought this team would be this successful this soon. This is arguably the most impressive undefeated season ever. Uncommon favor. Uncommon favor. Unbelievable. So great. So great. It took something from everyone. A freshman, Ted Smith Johnson leading the way. Camilla on the boards with a career high. Bree Hall with timely shots. It was everyone like it's been all season. How is that the imprint of this group? I'm, I'm going to tell you, Winston Gandy did a hell of a job on this scout. A hell of a job. He lost a lot, a lot of sleep. We had very little prep time. He explained it in a way that our kids could lock in and execute, and they weren't going to be denied. So I am, I'm, I'm so incredibly happy for our players. It doesn't always end like you want it to end, much like last year. But but my freshies are, are at the top of my at the top of my heart because they wanted this, and I, I hope we can erase whatever pain they had last year, experiencing not being able to finish it here. So I'm just super proud of where I work. I'm super proud of our fans. I, I mean, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's unbelievable. You you've given a lot of leeway this year. You call them the daycare. You've, you've had to coach a different way. South Bend, no, we're number one. My line is zero. We're number one, South Bend. South Bend. You've given them this freedom just like this moment. How have you allowed them to be exactly who they are? You, you have to let young people be who they are, but you also have to guide them and, and help them navigate through. belief and have a trust and their parents have that same trust this is what can happen they made history they etched their names in the history books when this is the unlikeliest group to do it and sometimes i mean god is funny like that he's funny he rips your rips your heart out and he makes you believe he makes you believe the unimaginable Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Well, Dawn Staley, a champion once again. Wow, what a run for Dawn. Three championships the last seven years. Her starting five from last year gone. It's very real to have an undefeated season with no All-American first-team players and only one conference first-team player.
With all of the parody in women's basketball, she took the unlikeliest of group of girls to an undefeated season and won a championship, a group that rarely performed to her liking in practice. A young, inexperienced group that she dubbed the daycare. They made her change some of the ways she does things, and they had to learn what her standard was and meet her there. A lot of growing pains and a lot of off-season workouts, a group with no generational talent. They were not supposed to be here, and yet they went undefeated and won the championship. Wow. Uncommon favor.